We continue now at the top of Daf Kufir Aleph, Amar Aleph, and Maseches Baba Kama. This is Baba Kama Daf 111a. And the previous Amar, the Gemara asked, we should say in a situation where a woman falls to a muka shechin for Yibum, she shouldn't even require chalitza, because when she did the original Kedushin, she certainly did not have in mind that she would eventually fall to a brother-in-law who was a muka shechin, who was full of boils. And the Gemara says there it's different. Why? Because actually, it's good for her no matter who it would be that she would marry. Kiresh Lakish, like Reish Lakish says, Diyam Reish Lakish, because Reish Lakish says, Tav lemeitav tandu, mi of armalu, it's better to sit together with another person rather than sitting as a widow. So she's happy with anything, and she does, in fact, have that in mind as well. Rashi says, Demei She is willing to have a kiddushin to that first husband, to the husband that she married, who doesn't have any issues. Al safek zeshem Even on this doubt that, let's say he should die, she might then have to marry his brother. She's willing to do that. Tandu guf shnayim, again, means it's better to be with two bodies. Kolomar isha becholdu nichola, meaning when it comes to a woman, any kind of husband is going to be pleasing for her. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, If he gave the money to the Mishmar of Yehoyarev and then gave the Asham to the Mishmar of Yedaya, that's fine. But if it's in the reverse order, then the Mishnah discusses exactly what to do. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabban and the Rabbis taught, Nasan Asham li Yehoyarev, let's say he gives the carbon Asham to Yehoyarev, which is the first Mishmar, the Kesef li Yedai, and then gives the money, that's the money again of the sto- that was stolen from the from the Ger, gives that to Yedaya. So Yachzir Kesef Eitzel Asham, Divir Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that the money has to be given to Ye- Yehoyarev, meaning Yedaya, that Mishmar, needs to give the money to the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, because they're the ones with the carbon. The money should go to the Asham, according to Rabbi Yehuda. The Chachamim Omer and the Chachamim say, on the contrary, it's the Asham that should go to the money. So therefore, Yehoyarev, they have to give the Asham to the Mishmar of Yedaya because Yedaya is the one that received the money. That's a machlokus between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. And the Gemara says, hey, Chidami, what exactly is the case? If you're going to say the case is that the Karman Asham was given to Yehoyarev during the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, it was actually their time, their turn to serve in the Beis HaMikdash. And then the money was given to Yedaya during the Mishmar of Yedaya. So what's the issue? Each one got during the proper time when they were serving in the Beis HaMikdash. What's the issue in that situation? And the Gemara says, Amar Rava Rava says, Hacha b'may askin, and here what is the case? The Yoiv Asham li Yehoyarev b'mishmarto di Yehoyarev, that the Asham was given to the Mishmar of Yehoyarev during the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, the Chesef li Yedaya b'mishmarto di Yehoyarev, and then the money was given to Yedaya also, it was still the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, that's what's problematic, and in that situation we have a Machlokas Tanoim. Rabbi Yehuda Sav, Rabbi Yehuda holds, Kevan delav mishmeres di Yedayohi, since it's not the Mishmar of Yedaya, li Yedaya konsinan lei, therefore the fine is imposed on Yedaya, hilkach yachzer kesef etzel Hashem, therefore the money goes to the people with the carbon Hashem, it goes to Yeho Yarev. Verabonin Savri, but the Rabbonin hold, shalo kidin hu avid b'nei Yeho Yarev, that what the b'nei Yeho Yarev did is not proper. The kibblu Hashem mekame kesef, because they accepted the carbon Hashem and they hadn't yet gotten the money, which is out of order. Hilkach therefore li did hu konsinan lehu, we're going to impose the fine on them, v'yachzer Hashem etzel kesef, and therefore the Hashem will go to the money, it will go to Yedaya. And we should note over here that Rashi said before that in the case of our Mishnah, the fine was certainly imposed on the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, because in that case it was only Yehoyarev that did something wrong, because the Mishmar of Yedaya, they accepted the money during their actual Mishmar. So that's why everybody agrees where the fine is imposed in the case in our Mishnah, and it's only in this case in the Brisa where both Mishmaros did something wrong, so you have a machlokas tanoim between the Rabban and Rabbi Yehuda, exactly where the fine is imposed. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a bride, so Amar Rebbe, Rebbe says, Ledivrei Rebbe Yehuda, according to Rebbe Yehuda, who generally imposes the fine on the Mishmar of Yedaya, Im Kidmu B'nei Yehoyarev, Yikrivu Esa Asham, if the Mishmar of Yehoyarev goes ahead and they bring the Karban Asham before they actually receive the money, so Yachzor V'yavi Asham Acher, he has to go and bring another Karban Asham, V'yakrivu B'nei Yedaya, and then the Mishmar of Yedaya will bring that Karban, V'zachu Halalu B'mesha B'yadon, and the Mishmar of Yehoyarev, they will get to keep the Asham that they brought. The Gemara says, Amri, they say, Lamai Chazi. What do you mean they get to keep what they brought? What is it fit for? Asham Pasalu, isn't that a disqualified carbon Asham? And the Gemara says, Amar Rav, Rav says, Laoru, it's referring to the hide that they get to keep. 
And Rashi explains, Ladivre Reb Yehuda, according to Reb Yehuda, Viafagav de Konis Leili Yedaya, even though in general Reb Yehuda imposes a fine on Yedaya, Hani Mili Hecha de Asham Rishon Kayim, that's only if the first Asham is still around, the Yecholen Bene Yeho Yorav Lak Rivo, Bood Mishmart and Kayem is Uvachar, because then the Mishmar of Yeho Yorav can bring that carbon while their Mishmar is still going and they can bring it properly. Avalam Kidmu Vik Rivu Bipsul, but if they went ahead and brought it in a disqualified manner, to Asham Habak Kodam Hakaran Pasalu, because if the Asham is brought before they get the principle, that that's disqualified. As we're going to explain later on, then Yinosin Asham Hasheni Liyadaya. Then the second Asham is given to Yadaya. And Lamai Chazi, the Gemara asks, "Well, what is Yehoyarev? Why are they keeping the first Asham?" And the Gemara, the Katani Zacho, again, because it says that they they get to take possession of that. And the Gemara answered, "We're talking about the Oros. We're talking about the Hides." And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a bride, so Amar Rebbe, Rebbe says, Ladivri Rebbe Yehuda, according to Rebbe Yehuda, Imkayim Asham, if the animal of the carbon Asham is still around, it wasn't brought yet, Yachzer Asham, Eitzel Kesef, so then the animal should actually go to the money, it should go to Yadaya. The Gemara asks on this, Rabbi Yehuda, Yachzer Kesef, Eitzel Asham, Islay. Rabbi Yehuda holds the exact opposite. He said that the money should go to where the carbon Asham is, it should go to Yeho Yoriv. And the Gemara says, No, Hachav my asking on here, what are we talking about in this Brisa? Can go in the Nafak Mishmar to the Yehoyarev. It's that the Mishmar of Yehoyarev ended, Velo Tavo, and they never claimed the money from Yedaya. And the, and the Brisa is teaching us that they were actually Mochelet to Yedaya, and therefore Yedaya is the one that bring the carbon in this situation. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Yidach, we learned in another Brisa, Amma Rebbe Rebbe says, Ladivre Rebbe Yehuda, according to Rebbe Yehuda, Imkayim Asham, if the animal of the Asham is still around, Yachs or Kes of Eitzel Asham, then the money goes to the Asham, meaning to say the money goes from Yedaya back to Yehoyarev. The Gemara says, Pshita, that's obvious. Hachi Isle, that's exactly what Rabbi Yehuda said. What is Rebbe adding? And the Gemara answers, Hachab, am I asking on here in this Brisa, what's the case? Kagon the Nafik Mishmartim Dahani Udahani, that both Mishmars ended. The Mishmar of Yehoyarev ended, and the Mishmar of Yedaya ended, and the carbon was still not brought. Velo Tavo, there was no claim made at all, meaning Yedaya, after the Mishmar of Yehoyarev ended, Yedaya didn't say, give us the animal, we'll bring the carbon. So, Maybe you'll say that they were all mochel to each other, and the money stayed with Yadaya. Kamash Malana comes to teach us the Aminah that we say, Kevan de Lotavi, since there was no claim made, Lahadro Baresha goes back to what it was originally, meaning to say it's supposed to go back to Yehoyarev, and that's exactly what happens. The money goes to the Mishmar of Yehoyarev. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Shamevi Gezeloat Shalohevi Asham of that if somebody brings the money first, returns the Karen, and then brings the Karban Asham, that's the proper order. But if it's done in the other way, that the Asham is first, that's problematic. The Gemara says, Menohani Mili from where do we know this? Some Rav Rav says the Yamar Kratz because the pasuk says Ha'asham Hamushav Lashem Lakoin Milvad El Akipurim Asher Yechaper Bo. It first talks about the Asham, the principle that's returned to the Kohen, and then it talks about the El Akipurim. You see that the Karen is returned first, and then the Carbon. The Gemara says Mechlal. Therefore, that implies the Kesef Beresha that the money is first. And the Gemara continues Amar Ahume Rabban and Rava. One of the Rabban and said to Rava El Meyato. But according to that Drasha, what about the pasuk that says Milvad Olas Haboker? It talks about besides for the Olas Haboker in the same way it says Milvad El HaKipurim and therefore you should say Hachanami Mechlal the Musaf and Beresha that should imply that if you have a carbon Musaf and a carbon Ola the carbon Musaf is the one that goes first because Milvad Olas Haboker that's coming second and therefore the carbon Musaf comes first that's not true Vatanya but we learned in a Brisa Minayin Shaluye Dover Kodim Latam Shal how do you know nothing should come before the carbon Tamid of the morning Tamid Lomar Vaarach Oleha Ola the Pasuk says Vaarach Oleha Ola Vyamar Rav and Rav says Haola Ola Rishon. It says Haola means the first Ola. Means to say the Tamid Shal Shachar is first, and so therefore how come we're not darshaning Milvad Ola Saboker in the same way we darshan Milvad Ela Kipurim? And the Gemara says Amar he said to him Anomei Asher Yechaper Bo Nafgalei Vadayin Lo Kibur. I'm actually not learning it out from the words Milvad Ela Kipurim. That you're right. It would not be a source, but it says Asher Yechaper Bo that there will be an atonement in the future tense. Vadayin Lo Kibur. There wasn't an atonement yet. That implies first the money is returned and. And then after the money, then you have the kapara, you have the atonement, you bring the carbon. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Nasan Lois Akern Vachul, if he gives him the principle, and the Mishnah went on to say that by Gezel Hager, the Chomesh, the fifth, is not Ma'akev. 
And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught, Minayin Shem Hevi Milaso, from where do we know that if he brought the principal amount, the Karen, Velo Hevi Ashama, but he didn't bring his carbon Asham, this is talking about a case of Meila, where a person uses Hektish for his own personal use, he has to pay a principal and a fifth, and he also has to bring a carbon Asham. So how do you know if he brings the principal but doesn't bring the carbon Asham? Or the, the other way around, Ashama Velo Hevi Milaso, he brings the carbon Asham but doesn't bring the principal. Shalom Yatza, how do you know he doesn't fulfill his obligation? Tam and Lomar, the Pasuk says, Be'el Ha'asham and Islach Lo. We learn from that Pasuk that both are Mi'akev, both the Karen and the Karban Asham. And Rashi explains, Minayin Shem Hevi Mi'ilaso Gabeinenem in a Hekdesh Kamar. Again, we're talking about somebody who derives personal benefit from Hekdesh, so that's called Mi'ila. So then he brings Mi'ilaso, which refers to Karen, that's the principle. The Hekdesh Shemalba, that's the principle, the amount of Hekdesh that he committed Mi'ila. It says in the Pasuk, Be'el Ha'asham Minislach. So how do we know both? Mashma Ein Slicha El Abshneim. That Pasuk implies that you only have forgiveness if you bring bro- both the Karen and the Karban Asham. How do we see that? Ayel Kemashmo. First of all, El Ha'asham, the word Ayel refers to the ram. That's exactly what it sounds like. It refers to the actual carbon Ha'asham. It refers to the carbon Asham. And Karen, and how do we know the principle from this Pasuk? Kediyolof Lakame. That's like we're going to learn out as we go on. Hektish Mehedyot. We learn out Hektish, meaning this case of Me'ila, from the case of Hedyot, which is the case of Gezel Hager. Ma Ha'asham, Dechsib Gezel Hager. Just like the word Ha'asham by Gezel Hager, Karen, who that refers to the principle. Kedo Amr Le'el, like it says earlier. Afasham, Karen who so to the Asham, meaning the word Asham over here, Be'el Ha'asham, that word Asham refers to the Karen, so therefore Be'el refers to the carbon, Ha'asham refers to the principle, you need both of them. And the Braisa continues, Uminayim Shem Hevi Ashamo Achalo Hevi Milaso. How do we know that if he brings his carbon Asham before he brings the principle Shalo Yatsa, that he's not Yotzi in that case, because it's out of order? Tamalomer, the Pasuk says, Be'el Ha'asham, we understand that to mean Ha'asham Bikvar. It means to say that the Asham is Bikvar, as Rashi says. Be'el Ha'asham Ashma Ba'ayel Shu Bachova La Asham Shu Karen. It's the ram that's an obligation for the Asham. The Asham refers to the Karen. Al Makaren Beresha Maisi. So see that the Karen is what's actually brought first. That's the idea, again, that the word Asham refers to the Karen. That's Be'el Ha'asham Ha'asham Bekvar. The principle was already brought. Now, Yochul Kashem Sha'ayil Va'asham Ma'akvim Kachom Ma'akev. I might think just like the ram and the principle are Ma'akev, so too the one-fifth is Ma'akev by Me'ila. Tam and the Pasuk says Be'el Ha'asham V'nislach Lo. Again, the same Pasuk. It says Be'el Ha'asham V'nislach Lo. Ayil Va'asham Ma'akvim, the ram and the principle are Ma'akev. Be'hektish that's going to be Ma'akev by Me'ilo, Ve'en Chomesh Ma'akev, but the Chomesh is not Ma'akev, as Rashi says, Ein HaChomesh Ma'akev is HaKapora. It doesn't hold back the atonement. And now the Gemara explains, Ve'yilmed Hektish Mehedyot Ve'hedyot Mehektish, exactly what Rashi alluded to. We learn Me'ilo from Gezel Hager, and we learn Gezel Hager from Me'ilo. We learn in both directions something. Hektish Mehedyot, we learn Hektish Mehedyot Ma'asham Dehasam Karen, just like the word Asham over there by Gezel Hager refers to the principle. Af Asham Dehacha Karen, so to the Asham over here by Me'ila refers to the Karen, refers to the principle. And the other way, Vehedyot Mehektish, we learn Gezel Hager from Me'ila, Mahektish in Chomesh Ma'akev, just like by Me'ila, the Chomesh is not Ma'akev. Af Hedyot Nami, so to by Hedyot by the Gezel Hager, Ein Chomesh Ma'akev, the Chomesh is not Ma'akev. Hadron Allah Hagozel Eitzim, we will return to you, Parak Hagozel Eitzim. This is the end of the ninth Parak of Mesechas Babakama. If you're enjoying these videos and this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And take a look at the description box below to see how you can support this channel. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Kofiud Aleph, Amud Beis.